Alright guys, we're back and we are doing a cream stout review. So this is another one of the beers that I brewed. Going through a bunch of these here, trying to put them all into one video so we can, I'm kind of behind on reviewing my beers. I've brewed a lot of beers. You've seen all the videos of me brewing the beers and then I never review them. So this is kind of playing catch up. So we're putting them all into one video. Sounds and good to me. I have Mike here to help me. He's in my homebrew club. Free beer. Free beer for Mike. He's always happy with that. So cream stout it is. Kind of nervous about this one because I used the Cooper tabs. It might be overcarbonated, but we'll see. All right, let's before we open this, let's pull up the beer smith file so we can see if we have any questions. Okay, cream stout. Uh, category 13B in the BJCP. Here we go. Whoa, that sounded a little, a little oh too much for a stout. Oh, it's going damn. Those damn Cooper tabs, like I said, I put they recommend one per bottle, but for a stout, something that's supposed to be a little bit lower on the carbonation, I would recommend maybe using half or three-fourths. might take twice as long to carbonate, but it'll be worth it. So here we go. It came up a little bit, but it's stopping. Yeah, it's not like that rye. The yeah. protein in the rye is probably what caused the obscene head. Wow. Two-finger head here. <laughs> maybe three-finger head. Depends on how fat your fingers are. <laughs> two two bin fingers here. Yeah, that's a little more than two fingers. Uh, here we go. I'll show you up close. A gentle pour helps a little bit. Uh, I did it pretty gently. So as you can Maybe see, not. put it up to the light. Uh, you can't see it here. It is opaque. Pretty much. There are some slight ruby highlights in the bottom of this thing, but it is mostly dark. Tan colored head. Completely tan. Definitely, and the brown. Definitely not white, as you can no. see. Don't a smell. nice coffee aroma. Yeah, it smells delicious. Okay. Um, yeah. Mm, First thing. Just, just a coffee aroma. Oh. A little sweetness to it. I'm getting a. I'm getting a coffee. I'm getting the roasty, and I'm getting some sweet from the lactose. Yeah. So, cheers. Cheers. A lot of coffee to it. Whole lot of coffee to it. There's some sweetness, almost like coffee with sweetener. Mm -hmm. um, very dry mouthfeel. I don't think it's overly coffee. It's not like a coffee porter, like that strong. I mean, no, it's. I wouldn't call, say it's dominating, but there, it is the most notable flavor in there. But it's not overpowering. There's a sweetness. There might be a chocolatey um, undertones towards the end of the flavor profile. Definitely. So what I used in this is um, some, uh, seven and a half pounds of Maris Otter, two row, a little bit of crystal malt. Once again, we get the chocolate malt, giving it that chocolate chocolate note. Roasted barley, which is giving it that roasty coffee flavor, and Carafat three, which just intensifies color. Uh, the Beersmith file says it's just a dark color and aroma, just used to intensify the flavor, uh, the roasty flavor, and also the color. So. Oh, and a pound of lactose, excuse me, which is mostly unfermentable. I think it's like 85% unfermentable. Yeah, it does. So it leaves that sweet flavor in there. And if, if I hadn't put that lactose in there, this would taste like a coffee beer. So. Excellent flavor. Mm hmm. There's nothing bad about this beer. Head staying around. It, it might be overcarbonated. Over That's the only thing I can say. It's a little bit overcarbonated. Once again, those Cooper tabs, unpredictable. This is my first time using them. But it's, it's got it's a, not bad though. It's got a flavor or a mouthfeel that's just almost not there. It leaves a little bit of a sticky coyness though. I like it. It's tasty. I definitely like this one. Woo! It's filling though. This one's like mm -hmm. this one's like drinking a Guinness. <laughs> getting full here so anyways I like it it's gonna go this one's definitely gonna be submitted so oh what else so yeah we're gonna come up next with this smoked porter and then finally top that off with what I call oatmeal liquor berry stout which is essentially just a ginger stout with a few other ingredients so uh, stay tuned for that
All right, so we're at intermission right now. We're taking a little bit of a break to, to clean our palettes here. But I thought I'd show you guys. So I have a previous video of this, but a lot of you guys have subscribed to me lately and probably haven't seen this. I wanted to show you the cool kegerator that I built. <laughs> this is my pride and joy. So, six tap system. Two different beer towers with a nitrogen Guinness faucet. Everyone's got to have one of those. Drip tray, completely painted up in Virginia Tech colors, Hokies. I'm a Virginia Tech alumni, and I love my Hokies. And I did all this. Me and a friend did all this ourselves. We bought this fridge. Huck, come on now. <laughs> come on. got to be quiet. We bought this fridge off of Craigslist for 90 bucks. This freezer, I should say. And it was in all sorts of bad shape. We sanded the puppy down, painted it up. Did our custom paint job and then added the taps. So, just wanted to show you this real quick. Show you the inner working. If you don't mind holding this up for me. Just don't go too far with it. Yeah, right there. Alright, so, fridge opens up and as you can see, drip tray just drips into this little bucket here. And then I got six different kegs in right now. CO2 tank, 20 pounder. And a 15 pound nitrogen tank right there next to it. And then six individual gauges to control all six. There you go. This can six different gauges to control the individual keg. So I can set them all to different pressures. So, and then you got the nitrogen one, which is its own gauge. So, those are the inner workings. It's pretty cool stuff. Anyways, that's the intermission. We're going to get back to uh, brewing, or not brewing, excuse me, tasting some beers. Uh, up next is the smoke porter, so stick around for that. Top three kind of stuff smoke porter. Top. Give him, give him guys. guys, what he's doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, we'll be right back. Alright guys, uh, we're back from intermission. Uh, we're going to do some more beer reviews. Hope you enjoyed the little preview of the kegerator I have that I built over there. Now we're on to the smoked porter. So let's get to this. Smoked porter, I keep forgetting to do this before we get on the air. But this is all live action five. So we're good to go. Alright, smoked porter. Ready for this? No. <laughs> Jeez. It's smoking. Hey. All right, we have our first, and the next one we're doing, the open the liquor berry, is guaranteed to do what this one just did. I I've opened it before. See, okay. I hadn't had any problem with the open the liquor berry. Mike, explain to me how I use the same amount of Cooper tabs on these beers, and some of them shoot out like that. Yeah, you probably have them at different temperatures in no, your closet. No, no I don't. Because they're at different heights? No, they're all the same height. Well, I don't know then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But this is absurd. Mystery of the world, Cooper tabs. You poured that one bad, though. Look at, look, look at this one. Two <laughs> finger head. Less than a two finger head. Four finger head. Somewhere in there. Alright, so we're going to give it a good... So for this color, you can't see it, so I'm not even going to show you. It is dark, pretty much... Almost as dark... Actually, no. It, it's it's not ruby as dark as like a Guinness. Yes, it is definitely ruby. It's actually... I wouldn't even call this black. This is... Mm -hmm. Mahogany. If you put it up to the light, you get dark mahogany colors. Yeah. But when you're just standing here like this, it looks black. Um, not a completely tan head. A little off-white slash tan head. Yeah, okay. it varies from the center to white at the edges. Agreed. So in this one, I used uh, cherry wood smoked malt. So let's... you already tasted. <laughs> Cheater. Yeah, I can smell it. Okay, smell and I can smell the smoke. Yeah, it's a nice. Now you gotta keep in mind for this kind of a beer. This takes a, this is like an IPA. This is an acquired taste. Not everyone likes this. Somebody who doesn't like a smoky flavor is gonna taste this and automatically say it tastes like shit. So you gotta judge it for what it is. True enough. And I trust Mike. He, he's able to do that. He's one of the few people I know that's able to do that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm getting the smoke and the smell. That's about it. A little bit of um, maltiness to it, mm. and you can smell the carbonation. <sighs> It's actually okay. First off, the flavors. Obviously, I guess I get an upfront smoky flavor. Yes. A little bit of bitterness from probably the malt. I agree. Um, and then a, a residual hoppiness. 
that you can taste as it's going down. Now here's the weird thing. This thing overcarbonated, but I don't feel like it's that horribly overcarbonated when I'm drinking it. Yeah, the mouth feels fine. The carbonation all came out at once. Yeah. And it's probably because it's got a lot of particulates in it that it just foams up better. A lot of nucleation sites. That's probably what happened because it's going down pretty smooth. I'm not getting yeah. that big burst of, of <laughs> I'm not one to burp too bad. No, it, like I was with it the goes rye. down pretty well. Yeah. But overcarbonated in a strange way. Yes, body, um, um, light medium, medium. I'd say medium. Medium. Um, uh, it's not light, it's not heavy. No residual taste to it. It doesn't like stick in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, flavor, right the flavor while it's in your mouth is smoke with a little bit of maybe a roasty kind of flavor in the background with the smoke, but that's yeah, what it's supposed to be. A little bit of hop. I'm getting a little bit of bitterness in the back of my, yeah. the back of my tongue there. Yeah. But let's see if that makes sense. So I said roastiness and, uh, and smoke. Of course we have the smoked malt. We use cherry wood. We also used pale malt, uh, Munich malt. Black patent malt, so that's going to give us the roasty kind of uh, roasted barley kind of flavor. The bitterness that you're getting from the... And it's just a pinch of chocolate malt, and you can probably taste that if you really try. But I think what's really doing this is the ringwood yeast. The ringwood yeast has very unique flavors, but most of them are covered up by that smoke. Most of the time when you make like a ringwood, something with ringwood, you get those, those... I can't even describe what they are, but they're very particular to ringwood. It has a very unique flavor, but it's being covered up by the, the roast and the, the smoke here. I'm unfamiliar with the ringwood, so I don't know. Mm. You can't taste the chocolate at all. Though. Just kind of adds a little bit of a coffee note, I guess. Mm -hmm. Might be coming from the black patent as well. Mm. I think it's good if you like smoked beers. It's not for me, yeah. but I can see why someone would like it. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's beer. You're one of those non-smoked fans, aren't you? Yeah. My dad smokes. Yeah. It turns you off. Gotcha. Well, I I'm gonna say this is a good beer. I like the smoke flavor. This would go really well with, if you're out barbecuing or something with some barbecue chicken or something like that. I can see that. Yeah, it goes well with that. So that's the smoke porter. We have one left. It's gonna be a doozy. It's gonna be the one that's gonna shoot up, I guarantee. I think. It's the Oatmeal Liquorberry Stout, so stay tuned.